Hello and welcome back to our channel, How We Move the Decimal. And in this video, I am photographing slides from Hawaii. And with this, there, I want to say in the 1960s, but you can see them at the end when I have digitally scanned some of them. I usually don't scan, digitally scan all of them, but I do digitally scan some it helps to make sure there's imperfections and to really see what's on the slide because i use a tracing board that i got from amazon for like 14 dollars. i did not invest a lot into how i photograph the slides but i do list them because you know you can't sell them if they're not listed what i did with this is took all of a couple years, I might do a whole decade, might do a whole year, depending amount, on the amount of slides. But like I've said in previous videos, I have thousands of slides I have to go through. And the curiosity in me, the um, person that's always, you know, a busybody, I guess, like if there's gossip, I want to know the gossip. Well, that part of me, I can't get rid of these without looking through it. I can't just say, lot of slides and sell them all I need to see what's on them it's just it's a part of me I need to do it I need to see what's going on with the slides uh, before I let them go um, maybe I gatekeep too so if it's like really crazy or maybe it's slightly inappropriate I will pull those slides out the this is still from the same estate sale where I went in and said I would buy all of the slides for $10. And I walked out with basically a wagon full of slides. I've picked up other slides here and there, mainly not paying for them, either having people give them to me or people say that they were going to throw them away. So like here, I was going to just throw these away or I got these in an estate sale lot and I don't like them or going very cheaply at auctions. So that's usually how I get my hands on slides. I don't pay that much for them. They're long tail items. These are not quick flips. This is not heavy duty money, ma money makers. But again, being in the area I'm at, where I'm at, uh, location wise, thrift wise, this is something I can get my hands on. Where I can't get my hands on really high end clothing in my area. I would have to drive two hours any direction from my house to find a metropolitan area to get higher end clothing. So I sell what I can. Um, I don't specialize. I know everyone's like niche down. It'll make you so much. It'll be so quick, you know, be so much quicker when you're listing. Uh, if you know your niche, you can shop and stuff better. But like, let's say I niche down to high end soccer cleats. Those aren't here. I could niche down to mall brands, but I would have to find a large abundance of them. So with these, I know the market's not saturated because nobody has these exact slides and it's something fun to do. If it's not fun, why well, do it, I guess, is the my perspective. But I have a bunch more slide videos that I've already recorded that I haven't narrated, but I've already recorded. And again, I'm maybe a quarter of the way through my slides, maybe a quarter of the way. And it's kind of overwhelming, kind of fun to think about. It's going to be my slow season here soon work-wise. So I should have more time to devote to this stuff and hopefully, you know, put out more YouTube videos and actually list some of these things. But we'll see. Anytime I say it's my slow time, I get jinxed. And have more projects thrown at me or my kids decide to do something. My middle child decided to run track and didn't tell any of us. So this was it was an unexpected sport. And one of the reasons we have this channel, how we move the decimal, is talking about, you know, how do we prepare for those unexpected expenses? Uh, like my van engine crapping out and having to buy a new engine because cars are psychotic right now. And if I was a true YouTuber or reseller, I guess I would go buy a Tesla, but that's not in my future. And then picking up another sport, which luckily this sport is through our school district. So, and we have all of the like things required because of other sports. 
So it's this is like negligible. This cost is negligible to us because we already have athletic clothing because of other sports. And basically any sport through our school district is free for us. There is no registration fee or anything like that. So when my kids play soccer through the school district, it's free. When my kids um, do band and stuff, I mean, we still have to pay for the instruments but and the clothing to wear to concerts, but we don't have to pay for the actual band lessons, which is a godsend because instrument lessons are so expensive. So if you guys can get the, you know, that stuff for your, through your school, for your children, we were lucky that the school that my kids got into this year, we got into the lottery system. So we were lucky that the school my kids got into has a lot of programs for them where their previous school just didn't have the funding or the staff for those programs. And now they're able to do all the stuff like band and track and soccer and cross country, and all that stuff through the school spelling bees, contig tournaments, like everything that we hadn't had before. And like, I guess, I know this isn't like a YouTube mommy channel or anything, but if you're looking for ways to do activities and save money, the school districts are the ways to do it. And sometimes they will help pay for things outside of the district if they don't offer it, which is really nice. The, the amount of activities that are available to us after going to a larger school was quite I was quite pleased with, but um, I know some schools don't have that, especially rural schools. I grew up in a very rural school. There was 18 people in my graduating class and our parents went to school together too. So, you know, I'm, oh, sorry, that was a popsicle emergency, but much like thrifting and everything, I understand there's certain availabilities in certain parts of the country and in certain towns. Like, my mother still lives in a very small town. For her to thrift, she would have to spend money and gas to go to a thrift store. Because I know if I want to get higher end stuff or more stuff in bulk, I know I need to go to the bins. And the, our closest bins is two and a half hours away. So, did I mention my kids were home today? Because it's a half day. I keep being interrupted and asked about things that need to be done. But what I was saying, because gas is so expensive right now, as I'm recording this, where I live, gas is $4.59 per gallon. I filled up my van and it cost me $88 and I about cried. But because of the cost of gas and stuff, if I'm going to go to the bins, I have to make it worthwhile. I can't just buy a hundred pounds or 50 pounds, I'm going to have to literally fill my van, and this may be more than a one day. I can't just drive there in one day, spend a couple hours at the bins, and then drive back and make a whole day of it. This might be a weekend thing. Like It may be more cost-effective for me to pay for a hotel room and use it as a tax write-off than it will be for me to drive there. Yes, we can use gas as a write-off, too, for we have a specific reason to go there, but for tax purposes, the hotel room may be a better write-off than the gas. I would write both off, but then the gas to go back and forth and make it instead of, you know, once a month or something, it might be like once or twice a year instead because of the price of gas. I'm hoping it goes down because we have a lot of driving this summer to do because we are true Midwesterners. And when we vacation, we drive there. and um. I was having a bit of a panic attack thinking how old my children are getting and how few vacations I have left. So we want to make the most of it. And by making the most of it, we are driving and that costs a lot of money. Um, vacations are not, you know, they're not cheap. We even making the vacation as cheap as possible with five people, it becomes expensive because you have to get specific sized hotel rooms and stuff that tend to cost more. So I hope you enjoyed this video and at the end you can see some of these slides converted to digital. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time 
I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago And call all in I'll bet on myself You keep stalling I hear destiny And it's calling I'll keep my head up high Through the downs and lows And we're all going life Still nobody knows But I'ma choose what's right And take what comes and goes And ain't no one in life Holding me back no more I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But I'll be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago (laughs) 